what what was I doing? Which day is it? The next day. The night. I was uh, brought here last night. I think it was last night. Sometimes it seems like two nights back, two weeks. No. They brought you here last night. Are you the officer in charge? They came to my house when I was in bed. And then held the gun to my head and handcuffed me the other, blindfolded and gagged me. They dragged me out of my own home. On the way here, they slapped me, they spat on me, they pulled my hair, twisted my arms, pinched my legs, they left me standing in a narrow, cold room, no bigger than a, a closet. No warrant for my arrest. I've been denied access to my lawyer to anyone else outside. Why am I here? It says here that you're a writer of children's fiction. Do you do any other kind of writing? Like what? Political, for instance. Hmm. Well, you're quite ignorant about politics. Good. I mean, it's better to have no ideas than half-baked ones. You're not a member of any underground group or anything? No. Are your stories political? I write for seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds. So, children make the best receptacles for propaganda. You can do anything with a child as long as you play with him. Who said that? This is ridiculous. We made a mistake. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes if they've had too much to drink, maybe they took a wrong turn. Take the wrong turn. My sincere apologies. You may leave. Maybe you should wait for the official apology. What's that? It's a letter from the head of the department apologizing for our mistake. How long will that take? No time at all. You interrogated me like a common criminal knowing full well you owed me an apology? It's a procedure we can never be too sure of. I last saw you about two years ago, I think. You were signing autographs at the Third Street Bookstore, I forget what it was. Sorry, but I really am not in the mood for conversation. You think your apology letter's enough? I'm going to press charges against whom especially? You're going to press what? Against whom? I said I'm going... I'm going to make a complaint against him. The one that was here. I didn't get to see him, but I know his voice. What did it sound like? Choked better. A man with a voice like a choked cattle. What did he do? 
could be greatly. That is, from the leaf, right? Yes. That's strange. None of our female prisoners have made that complaint. Our men don't do that. They're strictly professional. I'm not lying. I'm sure you're not, but maybe you imagined it. No. Well, after one day in prison, you were ranting and raving about having been here for two weeks. This is why you're such a good writer. Imagination. No, I have his nail marks all over. Yes, Helen. All right, don't worry. We'll look into it. Two more bras. It's got lemon in. It warms you up, doesn't it? Oh, thank you. You've had it all along? Yes. What game are you playing? I'm not playing games. But you kept me here waiting for it. Now you're imagining things again. You decided to wait. Didn't I tell you I had the letter? Oh, this is a mess. Drunken soldiers hallucinating senior officers. You really should watch what you're saying. Long time before you. I must call my lawyer. I must call my lawyer. Who's there? Why didn't you leave when you could? You cannot your lawyer or anyone else outside you must put your trust in us i'm a small part of a large mechanism that goes for you too but together we must seek the truth i will help you to the best of my ability but the brunt of the responsibility lies with you deliberate deceit will not be tolerated although personally i may find your lies charming inadvertent blunders will be treated with firm kindness and you must trust me to decide the ratio of firmness to kindness your best hope would be to depersonalize what follows and not to look upon me as a foe or yourself as a victim. Remember, we are both seekers of truth, and in this quest, I am your friend, philosopher, and guide. Treasure trove. The cat with green wings. Heavy duty political stuff, huh? Oh, you're right. These stories are innocuous. I told you you're making a terrible mistake. No, that's not possible. Are you infallible? Not me personally. Although maybe I am at fault, really. I'm not looking hard enough. He's calm to be arrested for nothing. Are you going to concoct something to justify my arrest? It hasn't been published yet. I'm still working on it. Where did you get this? I had my 
promise you, Tadina. Tell me about it. Why don't you read it? It's interesting to hear writers talk about their work. Hidden meaning. Surface. When you write for children, you pretty much have to be direct. There's no room for hidden meaning. Children are remarkably subtle creatures. My stories are harmless, cheerful pieces of fluff. They have no more depth than cotton candy. Did you like my house? The one is fine. They even cleaned your house before they left. And there was some blood on the toilet seat. Are you not flirting now? None of your business. <laughs> It's easier if you answer my questions, isn't it? Do you want to go to health? Do you have any physical condition I should know about? Are you on any medication? You answer my questions like a good little girl, and I promise I'll never do that again. Don't call me good little girl. Well, I'm still waiting for the artist to speak about her work. Closetland is about a child who's locked in a closet all day by her mother. Little girl fantasizes that the clothes are her imaginary friends. They all have wonderful parties in this closet, this child and her friends, and it becomes a sunny meadow strewn with wild strawberries and beautiful flowers. When it's time for her mother to return from work, the friendly rooster, which is actually a scarf with a rooster design, warns the little girl and her friends by crowing loudly. The clothes all go back in their hangers, and the child sits, quiet as a little mouse, waiting for her mother to let her out. It's a curious story. Very different from the flying cow and a cat with green wings. Were you a lonely child? No brothers or sisters? No, just my mother and me. But your mother didn't pay you much attention. Well, she didn't mean not to. She was just busy with her work and her Sunday literary group. You're still lonely, aren't you? I don't trust the end of people. Life's eternal spectators watching, waiting. Were you afraid of your mother? No. We had a good relationship. Well, yes, you were with her at her bedside when she died last year. What? Where you accused her of not noticing. <laughs> stormed out of the hospital. That night, your mother died. Never noticed what? You've been spying on me, haven't you, since last year? Maybe even before. Why? Why have my private conversations been taped? I wasn't trying to. That mistake is all part of some plan, isn't it? All conversations in all hospital rooms are taped without exception. We gain access to confessions, guilt, longings, you name it, that we wouldn't otherwise be privy to. Most of it is sentimental drivel and is destroyed, but the conversations between writers, artists, political activists, these are never destroyed. <sighs> Government policy. Tell me, what did your mother not notice? What did your mother not notice?
Come on, it was just a tap. Don't make it fast. Some people have their eyes burnt with cigarettes. Is that what you're going to... I don't smoke. It'll pass. Put your head on your knees. Cover your ears lightly. Better? Shall we go on? Yeah, I've got some more thoughts. If you answer my question, what did your mother not notice? Mother's in bed, it's quiet once in a while. When it's over, you can't remember what it's about. Don't worry, it'll come back. Let's talk about closet land instead. The child locked in the closet by her mother imagines the clothes of her friends and plays with them, and the friendly rooster warns them that the mother is on her way back, the clothes go back to the racks, and the child waits to be let free. Is that it? Yes. Why was the child locked in the closet? I don't know. I never thought about it. Think now. Maybe she ate too much cake or spilled watercolors on her mother's best dress. And for this, the child gets locked up in a closet. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? Closet land is a place where people go for secret meetings. Remember, the players don't come alive until the child is alone with them. When the friendly rooster who is on the lookout gives the warning cry, they scatter and run away. And when mother comes back, she can't find anything. You've made the child a martyr and the mother a tyrant. Your sympathies are with the child, of course, because you resent any authority. Do you object to my interpretation? No, but that's all it is, your interpretation. I can't control the messages people choose to find in my stories, but people get turned on by passages in the Bible. Closet land is a simple children's story. <laughs> Not a simple word. Just think. Skeletons rattling in the closet. It's a place where people hide, you say. It's a closet homosexual, closet intellectual. It's a dark, dreary way. It's like the secret basement. It's placed under the bed at night. All children's stories have an element of horror in them. Wicked dragons, evil witches, like toads and everyday objects. A closet instead of a fantasy creature. That's the only difference. Children's authors aren't political creatures because children aren't. Politics means big things. Anyone who knows children know they live for themselves and the present moment. That's the most that children can be taught to find themselves and the present moment within an ideology. They're far more receptive to suggestion than adults, and that's what you try to do with this story. You are guilty of subliminal indoctrination. That's absurd. So you don't support the dissidents? No. You're not a member of the underground? No, I'm not a political person. Do you support us, then? Have you supported what we've done for peace, for order, for stability? I told you I know nothing about politics. She didn't smoke. This is my story. Who commissioned you to write this story? Where is Closet Man? Who are the clothes that come alive in the story? We already have two turncoats in custody, the kindergarten teacher and the physicist. Who's the friendly rooster? How does he know when Mother will come? Is he in the government? We have a few suspicions. <laughs> You're not one of those anti-smoking activists, are you?
see there was no need for that. You'll know if I'm going to hurt you. It's the suspense, not the pain, that'll drive you mad. You've changed. More. Did you tell me? Never trust strangers. Didn't your mother tell you that? No, she never did. I have, I have to rinse my mouth. Sign this. I have confessed that my story, Closet Land, was an allegory for the struggles of the various underground groups to resist in the government. The child protagonist of the story stands for the uninformed reader whose views I wish to mold. I have consciously represented governmental authority, the character of the mother at the core of this are all underground insurgents, the friendly rooster is a government official. I can't sign that. Why? It's a pack of lies. I won't confess to a pack of lies, and even if I do confess to this, how do I know it'll stop here? There'll be others. More lies, won't there? Closet child knew that she'd missed her chance when she could have opened the door and cried it out. Whatever can the poor closet child do? Bad man gives her nothing to drink. She's so parched that she'd even drink the urine he offered her. So, closet child do what all closet children do when they're trapped. She shut her eyes hard and pretended that she could glide out of hell. She knew there was a passage of brightness right outside hell and that the elves had left a large pitcher of fresh dew just for her. So she pretended she was out in the passage, out drinking dew, out of hell.
hereby are accused of a conspiracy against your country and against peace, order, and stability. Your story, Closet Man, is thinly veiled propaganda designed to stir dissent in the hearts of children. All official avenues of redress have been sealed. Your rights have been suspended. The short-term goal is to have you sign the confession. And the long-term goal? That will depend on the success of the short-term goal. You do not merit a name or identity. You will henceforth be referred to by a number A, B, 2, 3, 4. What went on here? Oh, your clothes. Look at this paint on your face. Maybe your boys got bored and wanted some fun. We are not allowed to subject anyone to any harassment outside the context of standard interrogation. Someone else will take over now. I'd advise you to be straight with him. He's not very patient. But don't worry. You'll be fine. No! No blind foot, please. Are you scared of the dark? It feels like... It feels what? Why don't you question me? I don't want this other man. We work in shifts. Why do I have to be blindfolded? He's an undercover officer, and we can't run the risk of your identifying him later. I won't say anything, I promise. Relax. I have to do this. I don't want to use force. They're watching me, too. AB 234. Who is the friendly rooster? When the clock struck five, the friendly rooster awoke from his nap. Mommy would be coming back from work. The closet child was playing with the overcoat and his children, the mittens. Friendly Rooster shook his feathers. He must warn them before Mommy arrives. Who is the Friendly Rooster, AB 234? He's just a character in my story. 
Tell the truth. I don't know. I, I don't know. You turn him. Don't go. You question me. Huh. I saw that in a movie once. the friendly rooster is, huh? Overthrow the government, Your Honor. Liar! Who are you? Yeah. Answer her, Prisoner XYZ. Who are you? What was your code name? I was called the Friendly Rooster, Your Honor. That's your city. We're going to have a barbecue, okay? Uh, oh, no. No, 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 barbecue. No barbecue, please. No, no, please, please. No, 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 Uh, what I am doing, Luna AB234, is I'm inserting a red heart skewer into the friendly rooster's ass. We're gonna have roast chicken in a minute. And then I'm gonna pluck out his fingernails with a pair of pliers. I just did his toes last week. The toughest part is getting a good grip. But once you have the nails steady and firm, then you just tug. And you keep tugging. You don't mind him. You keep tugging until you hear a crack and the nail is on its way out. And there's pink flesh underneath. Pink as a baby's ass. Like yours, AB-234. Before the innocents are gone. Before it knew the world. And a man's touch. He's gone. 
Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking. I've been so often my skin's sticking. Those times are worth it. Burn so much you feel like you're in hell. Where are you? Over here to your right. I mean, to your left. Not your right, but my left and vice versa. Your verses and my vices and versa versa. Why did you lie about me? Well, I'm the resident witness. They drag me out whenever they want to incriminate someone or other. I used to resist, not anymore. Have you been barbecued, you mean? Well, you've tried a new cat's cradle, have you? What are they? Oh, don't even think about it, not even when it's happening to you. Think of something else. You, you got something pleasant that you can think about? Cat with green wings. Well, think about that, whatever that is. Take your mind right away from what they're doing to you. Have you ever done that before? When I was a little girl, it wasn't my stories. Sir. Listen, there's another man here. It's a different sort for a place like this. Yes, he questioned me first. He did? Why, why didn't you beg for mercy? That's all he wants. Why, he would have let you go. He's not so bad, really. He uh, used to be a, a professor of some sort before they got there. Place of They're coming. Listen. When it comes to question you again, throw yourself at his feet. It's your only hope. I don't like all this pain. I tell myself it's just a job, and then in my dreams, these words float by. Because thou hast the power and owns the grace to look through and behind this mask of me, against which years have beat thus glancingly with their rain, and behold my soul's true faith. So long ago, my soul's true faith. I know what I'm going to do. I don't care who's watching me. I'm going to open that door and let you walk away.
Get his handcuffs off. Keys. Your aim is to humiliate and debase a human being. There is no justification for Our aim is to rid society of negative influences. Our aim justifies the use of certain unorthodox means. Your aim is to humiliate and debase a human being. There is no justification for cruelty. Your aim is to humiliate and debase a human being. There is no justification for cruelty. 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 There is no justification for there's no justification for cruelty of any kind. Are you in good health? Do you have any physical condition that I should know about? Are you on any medication? Your mind, what are they doing to you? Friendly rooster, for instance. Well, she'd never have another. She's three months pregnant. We're giving him stewed fruit now. He probably doesn't know this first, but he's getting sick. Oh, go easy, though. You don't want to give him diarrhea. I still remember when my daughter first discovered bananas. <laughs> I miss him when I'm away. Yeah. He misses me, too. When I come home, smiles. Yeah. He looks like a little monkey. <laughs> the night supervisor asked me to work next week, but I said, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember what you say. In a few years, you'll do anything. Breaking your body into millions online. Pain in the books. 
the regular and the receiver. Discipline will remain government policy as long as you exist. Resistance is foolish, which is why we must break your body into your mind. We must break your body into your mind. When do you think? Yes. Two months. Yes. Two lifetimes. Two lifetimes? What? We brought you here two lifetimes. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You've only been here two years. Two years is quite. Listen, your mother died last week. We took you to the hospital, but she never noticed. You lie. Mama died last year. I was brought here last night. We don't have to play a game. Can you respond to my questions with the first word that comes to your mind? It's called touchdown. Closet. No. Toy. Closet. Do you write your stories in the closet? No. My stories come from the closet. Mother. No one. And she died last year. No personal observations, please. Sir. Pain. Politics. Politics. Abuse. Government. Caring, loving, just. Mind. Government property. Opposition. Sleep. Sleep. Sleep is pain. We must break your body to win your mind. They ennobles both the giver and the receiver. Discipline will remain government policy as long as you exist. Resistance. Pain will only strengthen my will. You can break my body, but you cannot break my mind. Torture, the policy of tyrants. 
Resistance is my only weapon. You can break my body, but you cannot break my mind. Pain will only strengthen my will. Torture is the policy of tyrants. Resistance is my only weapon. You can break my body, but you cannot break my mind. Pain will only temper my will. Torture is the policy of tyrants. Pain will only strengthen my will. Tell me you're being stubborn. You should sleep here and listen to the tape and fall asleep. The ship's dead. Well, it's a waiting game then. You've been here two months. Sooner or later you will fall asleep. I was brought here last night. Just think. Two months for ransom. Sixty days. One thousand four hundred and forty hours. You're lying. They brought me here last night. Why should I lie about what? To confuse me. To break my will. Sometimes you lie to the hell of it. shoulders fly. Rest your neck. Let it roll easily against your chair. Don't resist. Your muscles are bunched up, aching with tension. Release them. Let them flow like gentle streams, like distant seas. We must break your body to win your mind. He and the nobles both the giver and the receiver. Discipline will remain government policy as long as you resist. Resistance body is which can't this break is why we mind. must break your body, body to win you. We sign this. No. You're forcing me. To do what? Things I don't want to do. Doesn't it bother you to see someone stretched out in front of you? Aren't you worried that this is your job, that you do it without question? These men go to work in offices and factories, and you come here instead. What made you this way? What made you this way? Is it what they did to you? What they did to you? Or is it a hidden sickness, some disease? <laughs> Some inner decay. Resistance is foolish. Which is why we must break your body to win your mind. Break my body, but you can't break my mind. You can break my body, but you can't break my mind. Right. Right. Haven't you had enough? Why don't you just sign? Come on, give me a break. No. What's that? No. Well, I thought you did. <laughs> Why do you refuse? It's a small thing. It's just a sickness, sir. Think of it as an autograph to a secret of mine. No. Thank you.
Where is it? Right here. It's in my mind. I can break my body. But you can't break my mind. As long as I can go to closet one night. Who lives there? My friend. The flying cat. The friendly rooster that can't be bring me. I knew that since I was a child to call it my lifetime. And I'd go away. And they'd come to me. Floating in the air. Why would you bring that to me? Her name. Mama's friend. She used to have breakfast on Sunday. Picked up the coats and scarves and hang them up at the closet. And that's when he... When I was in the closet hanging up his coat, that's when it first happened. He used to smile after we broke her leg. It was a secret between us. I'm sorry. Your mother never knew. Oh, no, she never knew. This poor mama, trusting, foolish mama, strutting around. I'm going to chop off my head. So every Sunday when he came, I visited, I'd go to the closet. <laughs> and I'd wait for him. And I'd shut my eyes tight. Church bells used to ring. And my friends came to me. Oh, I go. Can't be bring me. I was never to forget that he was there with his hands on my lap. I wonder if you know, really know, the strength of your mind. Most people break down in a matter of hours. You've escaped from us on the back of a flying car. We must go to closet hand. Back in your mother's closet, baby, two, three, four. Go back in your mother's closet, baby, two, three, four. It's dark. You can't see a thing. It's dark. You can't it's see dark. a thing. And you closed your eyes anyway because you can hear his footsteps. You closed your eyes anyway because you can hear his footsteps. Go back in your mother's closet, baby, two, three, four. Thank you. 
Here comes the chopper to chop up your head. It's you. Green. 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 You won't scream. The dead, not even then. Such a knowing look in such young eyes. What made it you swear? Some hidden streak, an inner sickness. Dead red hips. Tiny ribs, like a starred bird, must have broken them all with one rough caress. She gets one heart. Beating one gear like a kid. Everything is fine. You took away my innocent too. But when you grew up and heard about lovers, and when they touched you, they breathed your name like a rose and forgotten. Because to see through and behind as months got me against what years have beat tossed launchingly with their ends and to hold my soul truly hold Why? Somehow you've got me here. It was what you started when I was a child. You're here as a dissident, a part of the tribe that thinks too much. If you continued writing about flying pigs... Cows. Cows. About flying cows and winged cats, you'd have been safe, but then we found cluttered ranks. Can you run back where I started or not? I invented cause the iron weakness to child and I'm being punished now after all these years because I created a cause of milk. Which just must have gone on here for ages, right? I mean, they sent me things of the dark. It was at night, I suppose, and the arrests, the census charges, and the brutality. I never knew, or else I didn't want to know. I didn't want to see. I shut my eyes like I didn't know what I did. A woman going to sleep. A journalist. About a couple months ago, she disappeared, vanished. The maid suit, sir, and we all went on with our lives. I remember going to lunch with my publisher, and here was this woman, someone I never really knew, I'd seen on the streets, said hello to even, just gone. Heard the thing about the mother next. An 80 year old putrid invalid. So men were searching this missing journalist's house while her mother sat outside on the street like trash waiting to be picked up. We all passed her on the way to work. I know I did. And the old woman looked at me in the eye, and I looked back, but I didn't see it. None of us did. We just didn't notice. And if I'm not. Seems like the same thing, really. Shutting a, a child in a closet and trying to let people away. I didn't, didn't frighten the child. The silence didn't frighten the people, too. And with time, they'll shut their eyes and not scream. I never screamed in the closet, did I? The only people who screamed are people who go around and think everything's fine, everything's all right, while their neighbors disappear all around them. And then they will become like children. Scared of bad men, the chopper that'll chop up their heads. That's what's so bad about it, because children are so powerless. I wonder if she 
Sigo con eso. If I told you, but this is your last chance. But everything is at stake. Everything. Would you sign? How do you sort of mind? didn't find a way he whistled then they found a way that's why he couldn't whistle to you today one little injection he was a physicist look at him now not a care in the world not a thought in his head and look at his eyes his empty empty eyes God pack of lies anyway so find it what do you care it's just a pack of lies Thank <laughs> you. 